this habit will prime your mind for success in 2024 and destroy any unreasonable, irrational anxiety. Because the thing is, anxiety is not a bad thing, but when it's chronic, not so good, right? So, as promised, this week we are talking about how can you not just get by, not just be okay, not just be menze menze, but how you can thrive in 2024. So this entire week is dedicated only to that topic and to that topic only. Today, I will actually take you through an experience and of course it is advanced breakthrough hypnosis um, of emotional detox as well as resilience recharge. So, in order to take you through that experience, we've got to do a little pre-frame. I have to share something very important for you so that this actually works and so that this sticks and so that you can experience a transformation while we are working together right now. Okay. And by the way, if you're missing this and if you want to watch this again, because this is the thing, remember what I said in the post, this is a habit that I would like for you to practice when you need it, when you want it, so that you can gain some momentum and also experience consistent success. And just like anything, think about this. If you want to be physically fit, if you want to be physically strong, do you just go to a gym one time and be like, oh cool, that's it, I'm done. No, there are certain things you must do consistently if you expect for, for good results, whether that's physical fitness, mental toughness, or emotional intelligence. And you need all three to succeed, to thrive, yes? So, here's where I would like you to start today. Consider this. Um, a lot of people can get stuck in the past. And I don't blame them because, yes, the past can definitely have a hold on us. The past can definitely cause for us to stay stuck in the past, stuck in a story, stuck in a limiting belief, stuck in fear, stuck in overwhelm, totally fair, totally normal, totally human, no problem. But if we allow ourselves to stay stuck in the past, that is not useful. And here's the thing, whether you like this word or not, every single human being has experienced trauma. I know it's a big word. For some people that trauma was minor-ish, and for some people trauma was unbelievably overwhelming, and to this day that, that trauma still has a hold on them. But do you know people who have had the ability to overcome trauma and now you look at them and they seem more confident than ever and have inner peace, they have resilience. In fact, they help other people, right? So that means if they can overcome trauma, regardless of how horrific it might have been, you can too. So that, that's one thing about humanity that I adore and admire. We have the ability to climb out of despair and step into happiness, hope, and faith. Every one of us. The question is this, and this is something very, very important you get to ask yourself. Um, it is a choice. We get to stay stuck in a story and understand how the story has affected us and the pain it caused and the hurt it caused and maybe the shame and the blame and, and the anxiety and the fear and the worry and the overwhelm, totally fair, totally real, and you're right. Of course it caused that. But if that's all we stay with, we're gonna stay stuck in these limitations, in these insecurities, right? Because here's the thing, and I love this quote from Tony Robbins, trauma is not a tattoo, it's a bruise. And when you can decide that you no longer want to stay attached to the story and you want to get out of that despair 
and step into self-confidence and step into self-assurance and step into inner peace. You have that ability and here's how the easiest way, the easiest way to do that is ask yourself, what do I have to live for? In other words, maybe there's a child you want to be an amazing role model for. Maybe there is a partner that you love and adore and you want to take care of them or you want to thrive with them. Maybe a career that you want to start and you're like, oh my God, I know this can make a difference for people. I know that this is my purpose, this is my mission. And, and yes, maybe it's a dream. But what is it that could be bigger than the story? the old story. What could compel you? This is about creating a compelling future, right? What is it that could potentially cause you to feel so motivated, so salivated, so intensely interested in what your future could hold for you? I had, I had a woman call me yesterday. She tears. She was crying on the phone and she said, and I told her, I said, why are you calling me now? Why, you know, why not just Stay where you are at. You've been at this for so long. You've been depressed. You've been anxious. You, you've, you know, you've had a very difficult social life, very difficult marriage. And she said, because I, I'm waking up every day and I'm like, is this all there is? I want more out of life. Right? And that is something that will move you. That desire that even if it's just a little seed, that's enough. That's enough to, to get you out of the story into a new state. And the, the, the key is also, as you look at that story, as you look at your life right now, at, at your past, perhaps you want to ask yourself, what role have I been playing up until now on this chessboard, right? Have I been the pawn? Have I been the king? Have I been the court jester? Have I been the martyr? Have I been the dreamer? And there might be some more, but, and again, it's important to, to get real, right? To acknowledge that. And by the way, you don't need to share this with me. This is nobody's business. This is your business. It's an inside job. How, what you think of that, right? But now the question is, who do you want to be for the future? What kind of a role model do you want to be? And here's the thing. We already are role models, especially when it comes to our kids to the people that are on our team, the, the people that look up to us, we're already modeling something. And the question is, is this what you want to model? Is this how you want to show up for your family? And again, I'm saying family because to me that's the first thing that comes to mind. Everybody else, it's like, uh, you know, what people think of me, I mean, doesn't matter give or take unless I'm intertwined with them. And then of course, it does become a lot more important. But um, really, that is, that is how you can get out of. And again, sometimes, and I, I look at myself, I was, as I think about my past, in a major victim state. I blamed my insecurities, my limitations, my anxiety, my stuttering as a kid, my difficulties as a child, my interesting childhood, so to speak. I blamed all of that on why I can't be successful, on why I can't set goals, on why I can't have these things that everybody else for some reason is able to achieve. I blamed for way too long. And again, that was my choice. I didn't know any other way. But once I made that decision, I was like, I'm sick and tired of being sick. And I'm sick and tired of feeling inferior. I'm sick and tired of being feeling less than. I, I don't want to be this way. It, as I watched so many other people, I'm like, damn, like they're successful. Like they're just, who do they think they are? And they claimed it. And the minute I woke up, I'm like, that's what I want. But this is a decision you and only you get to make for yourself. This is what's called having agency over yourself, having choice, and having free will. Does that make sense? So, so again, this is something you get to decide. Um, what can be more important than that story? And remember, again, that trauma is not a tattoo. It is a bruise. And again, I want to highlight, chances are your past has left scars on you. I am not going to deny that. Nobody can deny that. It absolutely did. 
And if that's the case, if you are experiencing overwhelm, uh, uh, you know, stress, anxiety, fear, worrying, overthinking, overanalyzing, you can be assured that the past still has a hold on you and that you probably still have unhealed trauma. And that is, by the way, my number one mission passion is to help people overcome that so that they can thrive, not just in 2024, but really have a lasting transformation. Um, and again, that is available, that is possible. Now, in regard to, as I shared with you, I wanted to take you through an emotional detox and a resilience recharge if you're open to this and this is the habit that I am talking about that you can do as often as you feel like you need as often as you want and keep in mind yes this is a process where your eyes are going to be closed let's go back a little bit whenever I invite my clients to go through my advanced breakthrough hypnosis I tell them this really important fact about hypnosis hypnosis is nothing but pure focus as well as intentional exquisitely crafted imagination focus and imagination those two put together will cause hypnosis and the hypnosis that you're doing internally will cause the transformation that you're looking for and the only person who can make this happen is you I can't make this happen for you because if you don't participate, if you don't engage, if you do not imagine and visualize the things I invite you to do and the suggestions, follow the suggestions. And by the way, you're only going to adapt and accept the suggestions that seem reasonable, reasonable to you, that seem like, yeah, this makes sense, like, yeah, this is what I want. Everything else you're just going to reject. So just trust your unconscious mind that it will do, it will literally take in all the things that will serve you and just simply reject what doesn't serve you. So that's the big deal about hypnosis. And the reason I love to use hypnosis is obviously in qualified hands is because in my opinion, in my exp experience, it is one of the fastest by far. This is why Tony Robbins uses it. And he finally started talking about it, God forbid. Because um, I know hypnosis has such a stigma behind it, and I can see why. But anyway, um, it can cause the fastest, most powerful transformation inside of you because you are creating the change. Not a therapist, not an expert, not a specialist, and not a doctor. Because there are some things that only you can do. And a lot of the, these things can happen instantaneously. Not, no years and years of therapy required. That's, a, that's another myth. That's an outdated, uh, outdated mindset that it's going to take years of ther therapy to overcome trauma. Give me a break. You know, a, a phobia, a dog phobia, fear of flying is installed within seconds. One person can have one bad experience and now they have lifelong phobia. Did that take years? And no, one dog bite, one bad flight. So anyhow, that's how quickly a human being can learn, adapt, and change. Now, for this process, of course, eyes closed, and only if you're in a place where you can close your eyes, please participate only if you are in a place where you can be undisturbed, and it's not being undisturbed because we're gonna say something that might cause you know you to say something inappropriate or, or embarrassed or no, it's because I want you to be able to focus. I want you to be able to take time for yourself so that you can experience and, and enjoy the reward, the changes that you want. So and of course, if if this is not now, no problem. This is a Facebook Live, it's recorded, you can always come back to it anytime, right? Um, so when and if you're in a place where you can relax, take some time for yourself, just make yourself as comfortable as you can be right now. You can even sit back and relax. That's right. And when you're ready and only when you're ready, just allow your eyes to close on down. That's right. Now, 
Notice, the minute you close your eyes, you no longer are distracted by everything that's around you. Whether you're sitting in your office, whether you're sitting in a car, in a room somewhere, or wherever on a park bench, you no longer are distracted by anything that's around you. And instead, you get to work with your inner mind. Instead, you get to become deeply absorbed in my words, follow the instructions, and every once in a while you might ask yourself, does this make sense to me, yes or no? Is this what I want, yes or no? Is this useful, yes or no? And of course, you have every right to ask yourself that. And you might now be really curious about what might happen, what you might be experiencing. And it's a good thing to be curious, isn't it? That's right. And as you sit there, you can also begin to notice that if you were to really pay very, very close attention, you might notice a sensation in your body that feels like a heartbeat. And if you pay close attention, you might feel it, or you might hear it, or you might just sense it. And you might also become aware that perhaps your right hand or your left hand is warmer than the other. That's right. And you can begin to experience the sensations you have on your feet. Or perhaps you're noticing the relaxation you have created in this very, very short time that you have created. And if you're enjoying this sense of relaxation, you can even take that relaxation that you have just created and let it float from the top of your head all the way down, down, down to the tips of your toes. Just notice how good it feels to experience the sense of relaxation that you have just created. And now be aware too that there might be some noises in the background, like I have a German Shepherd that might be barking on top of his lungs any moment now when the mailman comes. And just like that, there might be some noises, some sensations, some voices in the background. And just let that remind you that you're safe. You're in a safe place, perhaps in a familiar place. And just whenever you hear those sounds, just allow them to fade into the background where they belong. Just notice that anytime you hear something, just allow that sound to take you deeper and deeper and even deeper into this experience because this is a time for you. This is a time for you to help you get you the life that you want on your terms, your definitions of success, your standards, your values, and your beliefs. This is a time for you so that you can create the life that you desire, that you deserve, that you want. That's right. And you already know what that is. Whether you have just thought about it now or maybe you have been dreaming about this for years or maybe it's just a couple minutes ago you made up your mind and said I know what I want and I'm gonna go after it and nothing can stop me that's right whatever that may be you already know what it is that's right and just keep that close to your heart right now that's right and since you already know it's there no longer need to pay attention to it. You no longer need to focus on it because you already know it's there. Now, here's what we're gonna do. I want you to imagine, and this is kind of a silly request, but just go with it because I promise it will serve you. Just imagine, now just imagine, that your body is some sort of a container. I know it sounds silly, but just imagine. Imagine that your body is some sort of a container, okay? And in this container, as you really look at it, as you really inspect it closely, you might notice that there are some things in that container that just no longer serve you. Because here's the thing, whether we like it or not, there are days where we have got to climb a hill. For some of us, that hill sometimes is extremely steep and difficult to climb. And then there are patches that are not so steep but still may provide some challenges. And yes, of course, there might be patches where it's flat, but either way, climbing a hill requires yeah, a bit of effort, <laughs> a bit of tenacity or a lot of tenacity, 
right? And you get to ask yourself, man, if I, if I get to climb this hill, of course, you already know what awaits you at the top. You know what awaits you at the top, and it's so worth climbing, isn't it? And as you think about what awaits you at the top, you get excited. Maybe you have a smile on your face. Maybe you just get to sit up a little bit taller and be like, wow, yeah, that's right. But either way, knowing that you get to climb this hill, you know that the more baggage you take with you, the more nuisance you take with you, the more stuff you carry that really just becomes a heavy burden, the more difficult this journey is gonna be. So therefore, right now, today, in this moment, you get to take a look at this container and you get to ask yourself, what can I let go of? What no longer serves me? And as you take a close look, you might realize that you might have been holding on to anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, disappointment, shame, blame, resentment, remorse. And the thing is, you don't even need to be consciously aware what that specifically might be, what story that might be attached to, what person that might be attached to, who did what to whom, how did they do it, how often, how long, irrelevant. All you need to be aware of, that there are some things, these emotions, that have been holding you back from being your best self, from feeling inner peace, from feeling as confident as you want to be, from being your best self. And so today you decide to just let it go. Let it go. Now, as I'm saying this to you, you might actually, and if you do, please know you're safe. You are in a safe place. You're comfortable. But for some people, when they go through this emotional detox, they actually begin to cry. They begin to experience goosebumps. They begin to have interesting sensations in their, in their body. No, what that means is you're doing a good job. Just let it happen. If you're crying, let it cry. If you're shaking, let it shake. If you're trembling, let it tremble. If you have goosebumps, let it bump. Let it do whatever it needs to do. That's right. And let it go. Letting go of all the anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, resentment, shame, remorse, limiting beliefs. That's right. Limit. While we're on that subject, limiting beliefs of I am not good enough. I am not worthy. I don't deserve it. I was never good enough. I can't be good enough. They don't like me. They don't love me. Let it go. That's right. For some people, it's easier to do this as they breathe deeper and deeper. Just letting it go. However that energy needs to be resolved, dissolved, removed, rejected, however, that's right, however that resonates with you, just let it go. Maybe you just need to shake your head. Maybe you just need to shake your shoulders. Maybe you need to sit up taller. Maybe you just need to sit really quietly and just let it happen. Let it go. Let it go. Anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, shame, blame. That's right. Resentment, remorse disappointment, whether it's your own disappointment or somebody else's disappointment or somebody was disappointed about you or maybe you're still holding on to it, just let it go. Good job. You're doing good. And no, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to make anything happen. It will just happen all by itself because the only thing that you're doing is you're having the intention. Your intention is the only thing that matters. You giving yourself permission. Hold on. Back up. That's right, permission. You are the only person who gets to give you permission to just let it go. Nobody needs to know about this. You don't owe anybody an explanation. This is an inside job between you and you. Let it go. Now, all of it. Notice as you notice that container, you might be feeling lighter. You might be feeling happier. You might be feeling freer right now. You might be feeling, maybe you have no words, but something changed, something moved, something shifted, and you're feeling different. That's right. And by the way, sometimes 
excuse my language, but sometimes that shit hides. So make sure you're doing a thorough job. That's right. Go ahead. Just take your time. I'm going to give you some time. That silence is all the time you need. That's right. Breathing. and It's good to breathe. Notice that your breathing might already feel so much better. That's right. Letting it go. Just a reminder, you don't need to consciously know what it is that you're letting go of. You're just letting it go. That's all the instruction your unconscious mind needs. That's all it needs. As you noticing that container, I know, clumsy, but hey, it works. That container. Just emptying out. Emptying out more and more. And you might notice there might even have been some colors attached to it. Some colors that you don't particularly like. Maybe it was a dirty brown or a dull gray, or maybe it was even like the blackest black you can imagine. You're just letting that go now, letting it go. That's right, letting it go. And something interesting is gonna to start to happen. As these colors are fading, as these energies are draining, as these emotions are evaporating, never to be seen again. Now, you might even like to throw them behind you so that out of sight, out of mind, as they say, right? And you get to look at you through new eyes. That's right. Notice what you're feeling inside in your heart right now. You might notice a smile across your heart right now, feeling lighter, maybe better than you have in a long, long, long time, as you allow yourself to go deeper and deeper and even deeper, that's right, into this experience. And should you want to listen to this again to make this even more powerful, you might want to put some music on in the background, music that uplifts you, motivates you, energizes you, music that just makes you feel good. That's right. Will allow you to embellish this experience even more. Now, when you know that you're done, and it's, once again, you're gonna notice an indicator for you to know that you're done. Either you might be looking at that container and it's empty, it's clean, it's clear. It might just be totally invisible now, whatever it is. Notice that all the viruses, all that baggage, everything that has been holding you back from you being your best self, from you being whoever you want to be, is gone. Completely vanished, done, gone, finished. Notice you did this within a few minutes. This takes nothing, no energy, no effort. And no, you didn't even have to lift a muscle, did you? That's how easy you can let go of this baggage of the viruses, just like in a computer. If there's a virus, it affects the whole system. You can have the best computer in the world, the best Apple Mac, Gmail. I don't know technical things, so don't judge me, but you could have the best instrument in the world. If there's a virus, it will affect everything. And now it's gone. That's right. Because you are a master technician. And you are an expert at removing these viruses. That's right. You didn't know that, did you? Well, now you do. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Next. That's right. Take a deep breath and imagine you can now turn the page. Or imagine it's a brand new day or the story changes in the movie and you can feel the excitement. You, can, you know something good is coming. You just know it, you can feel it, you just know it. That's right. And now, I want you to imagine, because this is the part where we get that resilience recharge, if you know what I mean. You now get to think about the people in your life that you love and that love you. And by the way, before you start to argue with me, if there is no such person in your life, which is possible, I've met people like that. Don't be sorry for yourself. Don't do that. No, 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 no. That's the wrong approach. We're not making that left turn. 
if at the moment there is no such person, which is possible, perhaps it's a pet. Perhaps it's God. Perhaps it's another special energy, spirit, whatever resonates with you that you know, somehow you just know there's more. Somehow you know you're not alone. Somehow you know that there's something there to protect you, to serve you, to compel you, to give you hope, to give you faith. Somehow you know that's there. Either way, bring that thing, that person, that entity to mind and just notice how much you love them. And notice how much love you get to experience. Notice their smiles, see their faces. Even if they don't have a face, imagine they do. Imagine they're smiling. And allow that love that you can feel in your entire body right now to remind you of your real worth. That's right. And notice how you feel about that. Just bring those people to mind, the people you love, the people that love you. And allow that love to consume every cell, every atom, every muscle, every nerve, every bone in your body. That's right. Now at the same time, remind yourself every challenge, every hurdle, every problem you have ever faced and overcome. And when was the last time you celebrated yourself for that? When was the last time you congratulated yourself for having the ability, the strength, the hope to go through that? And if you have never, then when is now a good time to do that? That's right now. Congratulate yourself. Celebrate yourself, because here's the thing. As much as we're looking for validation, appreciation, and acknowledgement from other people, what if that never comes? Because here's the thing. Nobody knows. Nobody. And could possibly know what it's like to be in your shoes. Nobody understands what it took. Nobody understands what it took for you to get through what you got through. That's right. And once again, the tears might be right there. The sensations in your body might be right there because that is exactly what is supposed to remind you of who you have become. Not because of the trauma, but despite that's right, despite of the trauma, despite of when they tried to bring you down, when they tried to criticize you and shame you and blame you, and maybe you were the one who criticized and shamed and blamed and bashed you. And that's fine because that's conditioning. That's what they teach us. That's called human training. From day one, when we go to school, we get judged, evaluated. Oh, is this person good enough or not? Do they get an A or a Z or whatever? However, that system goes here in America. How dare. But I get it. This is a society where, you know, civilization is important and, and all those things. But right now, you get to let go of all of that too. And only keep the feedback that serves you. Because here's the thing regardless of the trauma, regardless of the challenges, regardless of the problems, there is something that was in that that you learned, that gave you more resilience, that gave you more potency, that gave you stronger muscles, that, believe it or not, created the you that you are today. And I know it sucked. I know it was hard. But guess what? The best part about the past, that it's in the past. And it's behind you. And it's done and finished. Unless, of course, you want to keep it in the front of your mind. Which that, of course, is your choice. Which I would not recommend, but that's up to you. You get to. 
look behind and realize how far you have come. And you did that sometimes without any support, without any love, without any coaching. And now, look into the future. And I want you to brighten that future. Make it richer in color. Make it brighter in brightness. Put the sunshine around it, through it, over it, however you like to do it. Put sparkles and sprinkles onto that future if you like. I happen to like sparkles. However you like to embellish that future. And now, Take all of the resources that you have gained from the past, all the learnings, all the teachings, all the muscles that you have built, that, by the way, nobody can ever take away from you, all the knowledge, all the education, all the learnings, everything that is in your conscious mind as well as in your unconscious mind, everything that is deeply ingrained inside of you. You don't have to consciously remember it, but it's already part of you. I want you to realize all the learnings and the resources that you have within that you now get to take into the future with you, whether that's self-confidence, whether that's resilience, whether that's self-assuredness, whether it's an unshakable belief in, inside of yourself that you never even knew you had. And by the way, unshakable does not mean that you are Pollyanna of your problems and you don't even look at them and acknowledge them. No, no, no. Unshakable means you look the problem in its face, you look the fear in its face, you acknowledge it, like, yep, I get it, okay, this is another problem. And immediately, you're thinking about solutions. What can I do despite? What can I focus on that will serve me? Who can I call that, that will help me? And immediately, your mind goes, where's my North Star? What are the solutions? What can I do right now? Now, as I said those words, I want you to imagine that there is a color attached to that sense of resilience, to that sense of self-confidence, to that sense of self-assuredness, to that sense of maybe you have no words for it. What is the color attached to that? Now, imagine that color surrounding your body, your mind, your being, as if there were a cocoon around you, a cocoon of protection, a cocoon of whenever you need it, it's gonna be there. It's this invisible force that is around you whenever you need it, whether it's yellow, orange, red, blue, green, purple, pink, or maybe it's just an invisible force. Notice, any time you need a little bit of extra oomph, if you know what I mean, it will be there, on command, on demand, when you need it, when you want it, there, done. That's right. And when you can feel the climax of that feeling, when you can feel that it's just right, and maybe this cocoon needs to be bigger, maybe it needs to be brighter, maybe the color needs to be richer, whatever it needs to be, do that now. And when you're satisfied, when you're ready, when you know that it's perfect the way you want it, come back to now and open your eyes, but only when you're ready. And when you're ready, that's right, come back to now. And notice how good you feel. Notice how good you feel. Maybe better than you have in a very, very long time. And enjoy that. And of course, if you want my help and you want more, you know where to go for more. That's right. All my best. Much love. Until next time.